today we're going to be creating our player character and dealing with Unreal Engine's new input mapping. Let's start. First, some housekeeping. We are not going to be needing to look at our camera's view specifically, so I'm just going to maximize the view of my perspective so that I have this going forward. So the way that we're going to handle character creation in this project is by having a C++ backbone that is going to translate into a blueprint once we're ready. So let's start building out that C++ backbone now. If you created a C++ project, you will have a folder called C++ Classes. Inside that folder, there'll be another folder based off of your name that contains two different C++ classes. We are gonna add a new one to this folder by right-clicking and hitting New C++ Class. Now, we're gonna be leveraging a lot of pre-existing Unreal functionality for this character, so we're going to make this extend off of the character class. Going next, we're now going to name my character, and I'm just going to name this a Dino character. After a little bit of time and a potential reload, whatever coding software that you have chosen to be your Unreal Engine default will load with a .h and a .cpp. Starting with our header file, or the .h file, we are going to build the skeleton or the contract of what we're going to fulfill in our C++ file. Now, since we did extend off of the character class, we are gonna have a lot of built-in functionality that already exists for our character. But that does not include the new input mapping, which we're gonna build out now. We're gonna create a new section at the bottom here for private variables, and we're going to now create our input mapping context. So with Unreal Engine's new input mapping, there's an overall mapping context that works as a guiding force, and then there are different input actions that dictate the specific actions that we take. In all cases, we're gonna to need to set the default value for this inside of the blueprint that we're going to be creating, which means this is going to be a U property. Since all we want to do is set up the default value, we're going to hit edit defaults only. This means that inside of the blueprint, we're only gonna be able to set up the default value, which is what we want. I'm gonna give this a category so that we can easily find it in our blueprint, and I'm gonna call this category input. So now that we know what the U property is, we're going to declare what specifically we are making, which is going to be of the class U input mapping context. That's gonna be a pointer, which is going to point to the variable name default mapping context. The reason we have to put class here is because we are not including the U input mapping context in our header files. So we are forward declaring this file saying that I promise to include it within my actual C++ file. Now we're gonna repeat this process twice more, once for each of our actual inputs. For this game, we are going to need to have both a jump action and a duck action, which we're gonna create now. Our input actions are going to be of the class U input action. And we gotta make sure that we actually spell things properly, but it's a pointer to the variable name. I'll call this our jump action. And then one more time, we'll do the class U input action. We'll make that a pointer and this will be our duck action. Now, the only other check that I'm going to make sure you have is make sure you do have this setup player input component that's already set up. It should already be there if you've been following so far, but just in case it isn't, make sure you have it ready to go. So this is all we need to do to the header file for now. We're gonna go inside of our C++ file now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna make sure we have all the proper header files included so that we can actually reference everything that we're going to need. So at the top here, we're going to need to include a few different files here. The first is going to be the enhanced input component.h file. Next, we're going to include the enhanced input subsystems. And then the last one that we should need to include for now is called the input component. So that's gonna be under components slash input component dot h. So now that we can use everything that we said we need to use, we're gonna actually start creating stuff now. First, we're gonna to go to begin play. Inside of begin play, we're going to basically initialize the fact that we have a player controller and we would like it to use our input system. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a series of if statements. Now let me take a second to just vomit out the code we're going to be making so that I can explain it. So what we're doing is we are simultaneously creating a player controller pointer and casting it to the player controller type. If this first if succeeds and doesn't do anything naughty, then we are going to create a local variable called subsystem, which we are going to set to the subsystem for the local player. Again, if this succeeds, we are then going to be able to set the subsystem to the mapping context, 
which we created in our header file and that we will be assigning in Blueprint. Is it complicated? Yes. Did I make this up myself? No, I found this. But now you found it too. With begin play complete, we're going to set up our player input component now. And that already is a function because I made sure you had it and it's down here. So what are we going to be doing here? It's going to be very similar to what we did up in begin play in that it's a little complicated and I didn't make it up myself. But it's going to be the same general process. We're going to do what we did before, which is create a variable in an if statement to check and see if it's valid. In this case, we're going to create an enhanced input component and we're going to make sure that our player input component is using the enhanced input component. This is gonna make sure that we can actually set up the actual context properly. So now assuming this goes through, we're going to set up our actual actions. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use the variable that was just created. So we're gonna use our enhanced input component and we're gonna call a method off of that called bind action. Now this is going to allow us to bind actions that we've created to triggers that exist. So let's start with our jump action. If I call our jump action as the action that we're about to bind, I'm going to bind that to a certain event. The event list that we have is all under E trigger event. If we look at all the options here, we can see we have quite a few different options to choose from. But the ones that are actually relevant are triggered, started, and completed. I'm going to use triggered as the event that we're going to use here, and I'm going to say that when the button is pressed or triggered, we're going to take this object and we are going to call a method. Now, in this case, we don't have these created yet, but I'll do that after. And we're gonna call the method that we're about to create from our adino character class called jumping. Usually I would say, why not just call it jump? But for the purposes of this, jump actually already exists and we're gonna be using that later. But for right now, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna call it jumping. So now we're going to take this and we're going to create it again for our other action, which is our duck action. So we're gonna call this the duck action. And we're going to create a new method called duck. Now you'll notice that this is yelling at me and that is because we have not created it yet. So let's solve that problem now. Let's duck back into our dino character for the header class. And now let's create a void function called duck and a void function called jumping. With those created, we can now see when we jump back here that we have no more red yellies that are going to kill me. So now back into the header file, I being on Visual Studio have an easy option where I can hit Alt and Enter together to simply create the definition of these two new functions that we've just created. This may not be an option in your editor, but don't worry, if that's not, this is the declaration that you need to make inside of your C++ file. Now we're not doing anything too complicated in this tutorial, we'll build out the actual functionality next time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a UE log. Now the UE log is great. It allows us to create a temporary log that gives a certain type and we're going to be able to tell it what we want it to output. So in this case, whenever we do have our duck activated, we are going to call a duck log and we're going to do the same for jumping. Now with all of this completed, we're able to save everything that we've done and now we're going to compile that into our project. Closing out of our code editor, we can go to the bottom right hand corner and live code to recompile all of the changes that we've made. Assuming you've followed along so far, you should also get that you've successfully linked and everything is proper. So now, with that being saved, we're going to go and create our actual input. To do this and to make it nice and easy, in our content browser, let's go back up to all, and then we have our content. I'm going to create a new folder by right-clicking and then hitting new folder. We're going to call this folder input. Inside of our input folder is where we're going to house all of our different input stuff. So right click again to start creating something new and we're going to go into the input subsection and we're going to create an input mapping context that I'm going to call dino context. And then we're going to create two different input actions by following the same process and clicking on input action. The first input action is going to be called our jump action and the second one is going to be called our duck action. Now let's take a second and open these up. Starting with our dino context, we can see that this builds up a bunch of different mappings and nothing really besides that. If we open up a specific action, it's going to give us a little bit less. And now let me explain what these actually do. The duck action gives action specific commands. I'll be honest, I have not found anything of use in here yet, but I'm still a beginner. Regardless, inside our context is where things are actually gonna happen and where we're gonna set up things that matter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mapping. So if we hit the little plus next to mappings, 
you can see that it creates a little drop down for us. So now we have the option to fill in an actual input. Let's start with our jump action. This is where we're going to set up what triggers our jump action. So first we can see that we have a key value and let's just drop this down. This is where it lets us choose what we want. Since I'm only using a keyboard here, I'm just going to click on the little keyboard and then I'm going to put what I want my jump action to be. So I'm going to click, then I'm going to press W because that's the action I want to take. And then you can see it auto fills that in. And that's a little easier than searching for it. Now let's say I want two different things to be jump actionable. Then I'm going to hit the little plus next to the jump action and we can see it creates that same thing again. This is how you can set things up for different inputs such as game pads, but in this case I just want to also include spacebar because I can never remember in the heat of the moment what jumps, so I might as well have both. Now that's not the only mapping that we want, so let's minimize the jump action now that it's set up and let's create a new action that we're going to be using for our duck action. And in this case, when we're ducking, that'll be done by the S key. Now the rest of this all does matter, I'm sure, but in the case of this project with the limited scope of it, it doesn't. So I'm going to save that. I'll also save our duck action for kicks, and now I can close out of this. So now we actually have to create our player. It is time to shine. What we're going to do is we're going to go back into our C++ classes and we're going to right click on our dino character that we created before. And we're going to create a blueprint class that's based on our dino character. We can leave it as my dino character because that's fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder that we're going to place this in shortly. But for now, let's just leave it in content and create that blueprint. So now that we've got our blueprint that's based off of our character C++ file, you can see that there's a bunch of different things that we have access to. You can see that we have an arrow, a mesh, and a capsule component. Those are all default that come with the character that we extended our C++ file from. We can also see we have a character movement that will be relevant in future tutorials. So first, what we're going to do is we need to give this a mesh so that we have something to see. Now, I'm no artist and I assume that you don't want to be an artist. So for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to be going to the skeletal mesh asset and we're going to be using one of the ones that already exists. I'm going to be using Quinn, but you use whatever you want. Once we fill that in, we can see that Quinn is not properly inside of the capsule component. So let's select our mesh and now we can lower Quinn down to the ground so that they're more better aligned with what exists in the capsule component. And as we zoom in, we see that that is about good enough. I'm not going to be too fussy about this, but let's maybe knock it down another tick. Yeah, that's fine. Now, we're not going to worry about actual animations yet because that's going to come later. And now we're going to go and assign our inputs. Now, we assigned these inside our C++ class, so we're going to be looking for something on our details that should be related to input. So let's go back to the entire hierarchy and let's look for input. And we can see here, here is the input category that we created with our default mapping context and then our jump and duck actions respectively. So for our mapping context, that is going to be the dino context that we created. And then our jump action is our jump action and our duck action is our duck action. With all of that complete, we can now go and compile and save our little blueprint here. And then we can close this out. So now the last thing we have to do is actually get this character to be in the world. Because what we're going to see here is we're going to create the player start. When we get the player start, we can put this anywhere we want, but to make sure they don't fall off the face of the earth, we're going to drag it over our little block here. So let's put this right about there, right over our block, and that'll be fine. Now what happens when I hit play? When I hit play, you see that looks like Quinn, but this is actually not our Quinn. You can see that it moves because this is the default Quinn that came from before. This is not what we want. We want to use our Quinn. So what we need to do is we need to adjust things so that we actually are using the proper Quinn. There's a few places we need to do this, but the most important is going to be our actual game mode. Now, the game mode is one of the things that it already exists as a C++ class here. You can see it right here the game run tutorial game mode. Easiest way I found to do this is we're going to right click and create a blueprint class based off of this and we're gonna call it, that's fine, my tutorial game mode is perfect. We'll put that in our content folder because we're not very organized and we're gonna create that blueprint now. With that blueprint created, we're going to be able to override certain things. If we look over here, we can see that we have something called the default on class. If we change our default pawn class to our my dino character blueprint, 
then that is going to set the default for this game mode to be the pawn or blueprint that we have just created. That's fantastic, that's what we want. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that this blueprint is what's being used and not its C++ counterpart. So if we go into Edit, Project Settings, it'll bring up this fancy little thing here. We're now going to go into Maps and Modes. And then we can see the default game mode needs to be changed away from the C++ and into the blueprint. With that blueprint saved, we're now going to be able to close out of Project Settings and now when we hit Play, we still have the exact same mannequin. What gives? Well, don't worry, there's still one more thing we have to check. Inside world settings, you can see that there's always a game mode override for the specific world that you're working in. We need to change that. So just like before with the settings, we're now going to override our default game mode for the world to either be none to say that we don't want a specific override, just use the default, or you can also make it the My Dino Run Tutorial game mode blueprint that we just created. Now with that complete, let's hit play, and now you can see that it's more T-posed, more rigid, and has none of the functionality of the actual full Quinn that exists at default. If I go to my output log, now when I go into the game and I hit an input key, let's say W, we can see that jump appears on the input log the moment that we hit the button. That's perfect, same with duck, same with spacebar. This is exactly what we want to happen. We want functions that are called when we hit things. It may not look like much yet, but that's what the next tutorial is for, where we're going to expand the functionality of the functions that we've just created and use the pre-existing Unreal functions to make our life easier.